Okay, so this is an interesting, uh, a roomies out of the second IBM trade. Is this gonna break the low? Did anyone not do this? And if you didn't, I wanna know why. <laughs> right in the room, how much money everybody made today. I wanna hear it, some big days from everybody today. You gotta have, I mean, everyone here should have a big day. There's nothing different with my mic today. You people wanted it louder, you got it. Oh, yeah, yeah, here it goes. Here it goes. Rumi, I don't know why you got out of it when you wanted to redo it. I mean, I am perfectly, perfectly, perfectly happy with my day today. But if you if you redid it, you had you wanted to hold it through the low. Here it goes. 147 is absolutely inside 146 today. Wow, did anyone just do the option I called? And if so, bright in the room what you paid for it. Koala Bear made one R. Uh, I haven't touched my mic. I never touch it. I never touch it unless you people complain. So you wanted me to turn it up. It's up. I haven't touched it. Galahad made 137. Journey One made 171. Big Fudge made 950. Smooth Trader didn't do it. Tried to put in the order, but a platform issues. I think when you're brand new, you got to practice on the platform. I mean, maybe you get on a demo for a little while. You got to you got to know how to hit the button right. And if you're on a new platform, it's just you know you're not going to be able to figure it out in a second. You, you have to practice. You either have to just take the trade or get on a demo until you learn it. That's the thing about switching. Uh, Gator said, Melissa, great call on IBM. Gala had said, yes, what? You did the option, what'd you pay? Barry didn't get it. Oh, my Lanta, Barry. Barry, Barry, Barry. Barry, you should have done the second one then on your own here. You should have done the second one again. Boom. Trader Lexi did it, but I got out of 148.50, so what? That's fine. Wild Weasel made 145. Susanna made $3,000. Wow, Susanna. It was loud when I was yelling during the trade. It might be yelled when I, loud whenever I yell, so that's not the mic. If I'm yelling now, then that means that we're up. So what's your choice? <laughs> Me, silent, or us making money, making money, making money, and me getting excited. Hmm. <laughs> That's a tough one. All right. <laughs> Green Maverick prefers me loud. Otherwise, he doesn't know what to do next. Um, Galahad got IBM, 287, that's a good price. Who did the option? You never did the, you never did the day trade? Who didn't do the, oh, who did not do the day trade? Okay. Here, here it goes. 146 is a target here on IBM. Smooth Trader did the option too. What price did you get? So here's the thing. Um, what was I going to say? I'm not loud on purpose or not loud on purpose. I'm just say what I say and my tone is whatever the tone is on the day. Smooth Trader paid $3. That's fine. So it's up to you now again if you did the trade, where are you getting out of this today? 146? 141? 140? Let's look at the bigger targets here. He 
here's all the here's all the targets that it's going to that I talked about all so long ago. So, back, let's look at the whole thing. 141. 140. 140. I mean, it's it's hard to believe that that could actually get there in that short of a time frame, but it absolutely could. I mean, it absolutely could. It could do it. It'd be interesting to see where this closes today. I mean, how this closes today. I don't think it's done, though, for the day. All right, is anyone still in this? Is anyone still in IBM? Everyone should have had a really nice day, particularly if you held it down. Um, you know, particularly if you held it down. All right? Boy, I don't, this was an amazing entry in this. Here, it's still going. I really think 146, IBM, is anyone still in it? And those of you that did the option, what are you going to do when it gets to 146? What are you going to do? Trader NC is still in it? Wow. Did it get to 147? Close enough. All right, Trader, Trader NYC, NC got out. So there's, it looks like there was only one person here that didn't do it today. No, Barry didn't do it. Two people. Looks like there were two people that didn't do it. Patrick is new and Barry missed the trade. Even if you didn't hear the exact number I said, you know how to do the trade and you should have watched it and did it. I talked about this yesterday. In fact, we've been talking about this stock for the last three months. I was not the least bit surprised when I looked last night and saw the stock gapping down. And that, you know, that to me is, this to me, when I can see something and I know it's going to go in a certain direction, again, I did not call the option call yesterday. I th think that would have been just too risky to do because you really never know. But reading the chart, my prediction that the chart was lower was absolutely spot on, totally 150% correct. It's unfortunate that the one option trade did not have the follow through, but I talked about it that instead, it's gonna, it's going to. And then it almost as if it didn't go anywhere, waiting for the earnings that came out last night and it, and, and it went down. I mean, it's just, to, I, this is what I find so just, this is what I love about what I do. I mean, for me, it's, you know, making money obviously is the purpose of trading. But for me, when I am able to predict where somebody's going to go before it does it, and the fact that I can do that at all, that to me, that is, it's almost like something that I can't put a price on. I can't put a price on it. I feel like, I mean, I just, this is what I love about what I do. And it's actually, this is the reason that I want to be in television. The reason that I want to be in television is that I want to be able to do these things and say it and then have it go out to be true. I mean, it's to share a talent and a skill that I have that no one else has. I mean, when I see something like this, I mean, to me, it's just, this is the greatest thing about what I do. It's still going. <laughs> and we're going we're gonna to talk about CMG. Actually, this, this, between this CMG and Google in the last 48 hours, I mean, seeing those things, I can't tell you the level of conviction that gives me to proceed with everything that I'm doing in my life. Here it goes. It just broke 147. It's crazy. And, and, so, and so let's go to CMG. So I predicted this stock would drop and break. The dream target was 350. Yesterday it fell off an absolute planet. And actually, Eric, who the Google trader guy who was here earlier this year and spent a week with me, absolute sweetheart of a man, was beside himself excited yesterday and made 1200 bucks, got out of it, and emailed me. And then I went and looked at it. I was getting ready for a webinar. He, I mean, he didn't even risk so much money in it, actually. So I predicted and made the option call in this, here, on this day, on the red bar, as it's trading down red, I, I made the call. I said, buy the 375 or 380 puts, and it just fell completely out of some news-related thing, but I saw the price was going to go there anyways. So whether the fact that, that I didn't know if some lady would get sick in Virginia, it's the fact that I read the price of the chart. This, this gap stuff that I've created and taught you how to do is real. It absolutely is real. It, it is absolutely 100% real. To me, this is just so amazing that I can predict where somebody's going to go. I did not know some lady would get sick. But the fact is, I predicted the price would go there. And it fell 30 points in a day. 
And this option still has so much time left and I don't think anyone should still be in it. But if you are still in this, this is going to zero. I mean, I'm saying that, but I don't really mean it, but it looks like it is. Let's just look at everything here quickly. All right, I would be out of this if anybody did it. We did the best one. It was due to go lower. I don't know what you mean, Galahad, but I know you're doing different things than I've taught you, so I can't comment on that because you're obviously using a separate system. Um, Big Fudge made $4,999. What? Are you talking about the price of the class? <laughs> I don't know what you mean by that. Smooth Trader, what are you, you want to go over the IBM entry? Great trade. It's nice to be back in the room. Yes, Trader NC is a trader that did the class a couple of years ago. I think 2014, Trader NC did the class. He was in the room for a while. I don't know where you went. And then he rejoined just, just this week. Good timing. Um, I really don't know what to tell you about the mic. Everyone wanted me to put the volume up on the mic to 100% max with the hot comp. We did that. We did that last week. So now everyone says it's too loud. Make up your mind. It's either one or the other. What do you want to do? I had never changed the settings. Not before, not after. If you want me to change them again, I will. You know, I can't control my tone on any given day. I mean, seriously. I sit at the exact same desk, exact same day, and I never move my mic where it is on my desk. Mark got the option at 310, so he paid a little more than Smooth Trader. The watch is for tomorrow. We'll look up. Sound is great, Susanna said. All right, we'll look up tomorrow's. Although, I really wouldn't get too worried about it. So we look up tomorrow's usually when I'm like, oh, let's try to get situated for t tomorrow when we don't have anything, but that wasn't the case today. <laughs> <laughs> um, AA is tonight which is the official launch I guess of earnings season even though it really started so AA is tonight QCOM is tonight another one of the mattresses SRPT United Rentals CHRW Here, I'll put him in the room. SRPT. What did I say? I remember QCOM. Oh, America Express. AXP, AA. This is tonight. Um, actually, it's funny about the class because to me it's priceless. So that's why when people say, oh, for $5,000, I'm thinking, okay, you know, I mean, I have to charge an amount that normal people can afford to, to learn the system if I'm going to have a business, but to me it's priceless. It always will be. But there is definitely, 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 definitely something something else that I have to be able to see things. There's definitely, a, I definitely have a sixth sense. I mean, it's the reason I want to be in television. <laughs> I mean, honestly, I think that's the reason I'm going to become famous. And I say that to people that I'm working with this project and they're like, okay, whatever. I say things like this and then they do it. And they're like, okay, whatever. And people don't really understand and get it. I think, I think you people do when you're in the trades and you're making money. I think you people definitely, definitely do because you stick with me and you're here and you're here in the room after the class and you, you're making money and you're seeing it consistently. But, but I mean, people that are not, you know, with me don't, you know, people in the entertainment world, they just don't get it. But, I mean, this, and, and the market. I mean, the way that I have continually, continually uh, uh, so well called this market, and I did not know that Trump would get elected. 
and I'm not saying that was the reason for the rally last year. I think we would have rallied anyways. But we held very uh, strong yesterday. We did not fall at all. And in fact, if we were going to fall, we really would have fallen the previous day, which we didn't do anything on the Monday. But we would have fallen here if we were going to fall, and we didn't. And then we held yesterday, and I'm not saying Netflix helped that, but it sure didn't hurt it. And I mean, I can't do everything at once. I really missed a call in this yesterday for the option letter. I mean, but in my mind, I wanted to focus on day trading yesterday. We had we had a good one and it's just so many things at once. And then when I went and looked at this, I was like, oh, gosh, it's way too late. And so here it's good I didn't call this then later because look, this is way too late to do it. So we, we didn't get this, but you know, we did a good short yesterday. It's just, I mean, this morning, I really wanted to get this out before the open, and then I was, I was like, I gotta focus on the day trading. I mean, it's like a juggling act by, but you know, getting all this stuff going right away in the morning by myself without any help. Today, I did tape the room, but I don't necessarily every day. I kind of try to do it when I remember seven streams. Um, I love to trade gaps. Sees it. Which thing do you see? Good, whatever that is. Um, oh, the screen. No, yeah, yeah, I didn't have it on. I was trying to Google the things for tonight. QCOM did gap down this morning, but I didn't really like it. I don't know why. Then it flipped. Did not actually end up opening down. Huh. All right. Some of you wrote in the room that you made one R. Now, let's just look at this here. Again, I don't really want to be talking about R's. But I'm trying to figure out here, you all should have made more than that if you held it down with me. So I'm guessing that some of you did not. Write it in the room. This was not $2, but it was sure darn close. Okay? This, this should, if you, I don't know, what, what did you people do? Did you people get out too quick or got it late? Because this was way more than one R. And again, I don't really mean I want to be talking about R's anymore. But some of you, some of you had really big days, and I did, but some of you didn't. And I'm like, did you get out of it early or just get it late or what? Seven streams, you, were you the one that wrote me a long uh, email? Somebody wrote me a very, 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 very long email last night that was way too long for me to write back right away. Was it you, seven streams, or was it somebody else? Gosh, I've got too many, I've got too many people with the same name in here now. That's why you people also have to have different names. <laughs> Barry, you need a name that's unique to you. Sid, you need a unique name too, please. Um, who else? Some of the people signed out. Sonny, you need a name, unique name. We've got way too many Joes. Uh, we've got way too many Jims. <laughs> we've got, we've only got one down under, so that'll be very easy. I know who that person is. What's really interesting is the ones where you can't tell if it's a girl or a boy. <laughs> but I know. Um, some are easy though. Like you could tell Gator is a guy. Uh, Mark Mobile said it's his biggest day so far. How much did you make? Galahad, we're thinking very differently anymore. I'm not so sure. You're going in a different direction. And, and I would say go with it if you're doing better, but you're not. So I don't know what to say to you, Galahad. It's like sometimes I don't want to I don't want to go talking, talking, talking to the room because I know you're doing different things, but I don't, I don't know if it's really working for you. If it does, then, then go with it. But I'm just going to stick to what I've been doing here. Um, Rumi, that could go either way. That's a little, I have to think about that one. Down trader, down under trader says me, me, me. Yeah, that's the easy one. So it sounds like you're thinking that the uncertainty of the outcome before the election was holding the market down. The market was never down last year. But when the election was over, then was the uncertainty of the market rallying? Here, let's go over it. This is a good question, but that's not, that's not why I call the market higher, because I don't look at fundamentals or any of those things. But I'm telling you that that's what's interesting about this whole thing. You know, what, what I'm saying is that, oh, Mark Mobile made $1,000 today? Wow, that is huge for you. <gasps> Don't run away with that money. Keep that money. Um, the market was never down, Koala Bear, last year before the election. What do you mean? Or do you mean on the night of in the night the where the election thing was going on? 
Here, do you mean overnight when it was happening? Because the market was never down last year. In 2016, during the whole election cycle, we were never down. We started the year with the gap down in 2016, and that was unexpected. It was some effect of something that happened with China, but then we bounced very quickly in the first two months of the year, and we rallied and took off ever since. The night of the election night, we were down big in the futures, but then we didn't, we didn't, open, we didn't open down a lot. And that we opened a slightly down and a small gap down, and then we had a big rally. What do you mean down? Because the market was really never down last year. I mean, you could have counted January, but that really doesn't mean anything. Only have one wild weasel. You're correct. Journey Woman got more than an R, but got filled late. That's okay. Yes, I think the long email was you then, seven streams. It was it was too long of an email to write back. It's 5 a.m. Um, if you write me an email that's longer than two paragraphs, do not expect an immediate answer <laughs> on my phone. Um, Koala Bear, what do you mean here about this thing? Because this, to me, does not look like it was ever in a downtrend in 2016. I don't think the market waited for anything for Trump. I don't think the market waited for Trump at all. I'm saying the market was higher all along. And then, then, then when the reaction then ex became extremely positive, which made the lift, the lift take off, and we've really never looked back. I mean, if you want to blow up November, we're just looking at from the election results till now, we really have absolutely never really pulled back. I mean, you know, for people that are waiting for pullbacks deep to go long in the market, you're just not getting them. I mean, you know, we could end up carrying through to the rest of 2017 and never getting anywhere near the 200 period moving average, which I wouldn't be surprised because we had retested it actually right before the election. So the market is just taking off. Remember, I said 250. That looks like in sight. But I, what, what I think is so interesting about everything that I taught you and everything that I do myself is I'm saying that we don't need to know those things. It doesn't matter. I don't need to know that somebody ate a taco in Virginia and got sick, or a burrito. I'm saying to you that it's rega regardless of these things that occur in the life event of, a, of the market or, or a stock chart, the price pr that we look at when something gaps, we're able to predict it. Whether somebody has a wonderful taco or, an, uh, or a poisonous taco. So the thing is that you know it's, it's as if it doesn't even matter, which to me is phenomenal. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm not saying we're right all the time because we're absolutely not. But the fact that we're right so often to me is phenomenal because we don't look at those other things. We're only looking at price. And based on that, we predict it so well. And that to me is amazing because it seems as if events then surround a thing that happens that makes the price move. But we predicted it beforehand anyway. So how would we have known of the event? We wouldn't. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, let's just roll, dial it back. What if Hillary had won? Do you think the market would have had a negative reaction? No. No, I don't. So, so the thing is that, you know, it did what it did anyways and was going to do. I'm not saying Trump's a reason for the rally. I'm saying we were going to rally anyways. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, people want to say that's the reason for the rally, but I'm just saying that it, it doesn't matter. And CMG would have dropped and fallen too, even if a lady wouldn't have gotten sick. It might have been for some other reason, but it was going to do it regardless. Do you know what I'm saying? You get the point what I'm trying to say. Um, uh, does anybody, is anyone having issues with TurboTick today? I don't know if anyone in here uses TurboTick 7 streams. Qualifier says the main point about the market was, do you think the market rallied over removal of presidential election uncertainty once the election was over? No, I think the market was higher anyways. No, I think the market was higher anyways. Remember we talked about this all the time because, you know, we talk about the timing of things. Again, here, IBM. I mean, I actually could go back and find my YouTube videos 
here, let's see if I can find them right now. I gave the numbers that the stock would go to, but I can't give the exact, exact time and exact second of everything that will happen. Do you know what I'm saying? I mean, I mean, the fact that we can do that as day traders so often is amazing in and of itself. But I'm saying the fact that that I said this months ago, it's the same thing I would have said with the market. It does. It, 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 no, it has nothing to do with it. Here, hold on. It was May. I'm I'm first of all number one and absolutely 100% number one. Congratulations to everybody who had an amazing day today. If you did not get the trade, you should have done it yourself. If for some reason the mic was too loud and you didn't get you didn't hear the entry. The gap was good. I talked about it yesterday. You cannot miss days like this. You absolutely cannot. You cannot miss days like this. It is earnings season and you have to get every day like this that we get. The stock dropped massively, almost two bucks. And it had a smallest stop I've ever seen in this stock. Um, and I can't believe we were that aggressive, but I was all over it. Um, second of all, I'm reviewing this for the purposes of everybody here understanding that you should have a lot of conviction in what I taught you. And the last 24 to 48 hours has strengthened my own conviction. It takes a lot of guts to go out there and, and, and say things and make calls and then sometimes they don't work. Like I called that IBM. Do you know the people actually, because I gave, I gave that to the whole list, remember? Remember I gave it to the whole list and I had people bitch at me for giving that call and it didn't work out. And I want to be like, are you kidding me? Like, really? I just gave you a free call. No, that one didn't work. Now this one did, and those people aren't going to get it. But, you know, it's like, seriously? Then do the class or sign up for the letter. But I was right all along anyways. Um, crap, where is it here? May. Oh, well, actually, the first one was, it was a winner initially. Yeah, I'm looking here. I must have, did I give two? Because I'm looking here at the videos. I must have did two. One did work. Then the second one didn't work. Yeah, I did two. The first one worked, and the second one didn't work in IBM. And now the third one's going to work. That's right. Because I'm like, wait a minute, I have so many IBM videos here. Hold on. Yes. Yep. Yep. See here, May 24th, I did a second thing when it, it didn't, it was just flat. Here, let's listen to the one that didn't work because we'll learn something from this, I'm sure. Let me just see how long this is. It's only two minutes. Let's listen to it. Hold on. Wait, let me just answer the questions and then, and then we're going to listen to this video because we're all going to learn something from this here now after this just did this today. I'm seeing that the news follows the price action, not the cause. In some cases, it's news. In some cases, it's it's a report. In some cases, it's it's just the market, though, seven streams. That's what I'm saying. It could be anything. Koala Bear's trying to find, Koala Bear's trying to find, Koala Bear's like uh, make the money or love to trade or where are you? Where's that one guy? Where are you? Where are you? Where are you? Love to trade gaps. Koala Bear's like love to trade gaps. Love to trade gaps wants to put everything in a box and go doop, boop, boop. Everything is not black and white, okay? Don't say, well, because of this, doop, boop, do. I know what you're trying to do here, Koala Bear, because love to trade gaps tries to do that too. It's not like that. That's the whole point. Whatever the reason is, we can talk about it. We can talk about it all day long if you want. But the fact is it doesn't matter. Love to trade gaps says, hey, what did I do? Koala Bear is wanting to try to put something in a box about the movement of a stock based on a news or something. He's trying to find a way to just fit it together. Like you were trying to do things, squeezing it like black and white. It's not like that. Just read the gaps. Don't try to find something to say, well, if it does this, then 100% of the time or 28.2%, it's going to do this if it's based on this, doop a doop a doo. No, read the gap, rate the gap, look at the targets, look at the support, look at the resistance, see how it plays out, watch the price action. You don't need to watch the news. You do not need to read the earnings reports. Don't try to find something else to make a reason to say, 
I know everybody likes to do that. Men love to do that. Men love to do that. None of the women in here any ever say anything about that. I don't think any, there's no woman that has ever done my class that ever wants to talk about this stuff. Maybe that's why I don't either. Maybe as women, we just don't care about that stuff. But I'm telling you, you don't need to know it. Men love to talk about that stuff though. I don't know why. But, you know, I've never had one woman ask me about fundamentals or even care. Love to trade gaps is my biggest fan. <laughs> Thank you. Don't waste fresh air. I don't know what that means. My impression is the vast majority of the U.S. population has a paycheck mentality. Most are workers. Koala Bear, you're a U.S. You're an American. My God, that sounds so un-American, Koala Bear. That sounds very un-American. You're you're an American. You live in the heartland. I don't I, I I don't know if that's the case or not. I'm not that biased. I mean, I, I can't say either way. But I'm surprised to hear that from you, Koala Bear, because you live in uh, Middle America. You live in the heartland. Uh, but you know, e either way, I'm just saying that, you know, you know, actually, let me just maybe think of something. We were here. I looked back at this. I, I just, this is a good point here. I'm going to make actually Claudia just made me remember something I thought of when I was in laying in bed last night. This flipped yesterday. We had a great exit on this. When I went back and looked at this after my webinar, I was like, holy crap. I said to myself, look at the way that flipped. Did anybody go look at that? We had a good trade. We made money in that. And I went back and looked at it and I said, woo, that's why we don't hold to the piggies. Look what Hog did. It completely flipped. And we made good money in that yesterday. I hope nobody held that to some crazy number because it didn't get there. And we had the money and we had the trade in the morning. But it made me think of something then last night. And now Koala Bear just made me remember it. It's... Koala Bear is saying he thinks a lot of Americans have a paycheck mentality. That is not my statement. That's Koala Bear's. I think that sounds a little snobby, but I'll give you a pass. Either way, what I was thinking last night about the hog was, this is why we can't, we can't worry about squeezing every penny out of a trade. But it's interesting, Koala Bear said the paycheck mentality, because when you have a paycheck, you're like, I got to make this paycheck work to the next payday. But the point is, though, that if you're trying to squeeze every penny out of this, like say you hit out of it, like I got out of this, actually, I did not get out of this at 46. I got out of it slightly before. But I'm saying, what if I hadn't, then it hit 46, then I didn't get out of it, and it looked like it was going to break. And then if I hadn't gotten out of it, because I insisted it was going to keep going, which I thought that it was, I mean, this looked good. And the daily chart is still lower. But anyways, the idea of squeezing every penny out of a trade, people try to do that, I think, because when people have jobs, they think like that about money because they have to make the money that they make in their job last. So I, I was thinking about this last night. That's probably why people do want to squeeze every penny out of a trade. People want to squeeze every penny out of a trade to make up some days for the losses. Also, some people are greedy. Also, some people have pie in the sky ideas from what money they want to make in a trade. And that's not realistic every day in the market. But also, I think it's, it is kind of like the idea that you get a paycheck whenever you get a check every week or every two weeks at your job normally if you work for a company and you, you, you ha and like every penny has to count that you have budgeted for that period to the next period. You got to pay your mortgage and you got to pay your car bill and you have this much on gas and this much on food and 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 whatever. Do you know what I mean? So maybe that is also why day traders want to always squeeze every penny out of something because because they are used to kind of doing that with their checks. Maybe that is why. I don't know, but I don't think that that's the nationwide mentality. I don't, I don't think that at all. To be honest with you, I think a lot of people are horrible at budgeting themselves. So, you know, the paycheck mentality, you could say it, but I think for the most part, people are really poor at budgeting themselves, which is why people get into debt. And so, you know, if, if, everybody, if everybody budgeted themselves well from paycheck to paycheck, they're, you know, half the country wouldn't be in debt.
You're slightly curious anecdotally about why, but mostly you don't care. The chart is a chart. I know you're curious. And like I said, it's a, it's a guy thing. It's a guy thing. I don't know. It's a man thing. I don't know. It's a guy thing that, that they want to know about this stuff like this. I don't know. Maybe one of you men can explain to me why. It's a testosterone thing. I don't know. Men want to know why this thing did this and the fundamentals. Actually, the fundamentals, I think, on IBM ended up being positive. I think they were good. I think it, re I think it beat expectations, didn't it? And it fell off a planet. So there you go. I mean... I mean, I can't tell you how many uh, options I was in, you know, in 2016, where everything, everything was like amazing, and then the stocks would fall in the day, and you're like, screw this, you know. So, and I held them into the earnings, which I should never have done. I'm talking about holding them through the earnings, which I'll never do that again. Here, this still looks lower. All right, a lot of people are writing stuff. Let me just say. Smooth trader, yes. You got it right. Except for you just didn't get the trade. You have to figure out why today in your, in your platform. Uh, smooth trader, yes. You, you have the entry correct. I, you know, I, don't know why you, I don't know why you didn't get it. Um, Koala Bear says he doesn't think it's an American. You think most of the population shies away from risk. But most are very conditioned to trading time for money to mostly excluding considering taking a decent prudent risk. That's probably true about the idea of being prudent. I don't know if most people are risky or not risky. Maybe we should take a survey. If you need to make more, then you put on the table, otherwise you end up where you are, Galahad. Galahad, I didn't write you back yesterday. Here, let's talk about CMG. You did a good job with this. I'm very, very happy. I'm guessing you got out of the Google or you never did the Google train. Actually, let's talk about Google first. So I'm guessing nobody nobody held this through. Uh, Shower Singer actually did say you got out of it yesterday and made 1.2, which was good. Um, this did end up going to 970. You would have had it actually went over it today. You would have had to take it out this morning. 973. Did I, I'm guessing no one held this through today. But, you know... You did do a good job with the CMG Galahad. I did say this would go to 970. This was a good move up into yesterday's close, though. So if you, if I don't think anyone's still in it, but the exit really was yesterday. If you wanted to hold it or into the early this morning. Time is getting late. Today's Wednesday, and you only got two more days left, and the market's near the high. So the exit would have been yesterday or today. Oh, that's right. I forgot. That's right. You did close the Google Galahad. I forgot. I totally forgot that. There's just too many trades to talk about now. Anyways, is anyone still in this? Galahad, you did do a good job making money in this. You've lowered your risk and your options, I, I noticed. Um, this looks good. I mean, it, it still looks lower, but I can't see why anyone would have not gotten out of this yesterday. Is anyone still in this, though? And write in the room if you made the money in this. What I think probably happened is people didn't do this on the list. I think I'm going to send out an email and ask whoever did it. Because I think the people that did it already emailed me yesterday. I have a feeling the people in the options letter list didn't do it. And I don't know why. The first trade I called in this worked. My guess is market near new highs. People got scared to do a put. You know? Um... Gator, I'll take that under consideration. Um, Galahad is not happy with what he made in IBM. Let's go over it. Smooth trader, since it's your very first trade in the world, since you just joined the letter list, I don't think it's a problem for you to get out of this at the first target. No. I don't think that would be a bad idea for you. Why? What? I mean, this is, you know, what do you, I just, you know, for you to say that you're not happy with what you made in this here, I just, I don't know what to say, Galahad. The only reason you're not happy with this is because you didn't have a big size. That's the only reason. And, and I mean, if you want to get to the point where you're trading bigger size again, then you have one objective. 
It's to follow your money management rules. And you, you haven't been doing that. So you're the only person responsible for, your, for the situation you're in, which is that you decided to low, pull your risk back. But for you, I don't think there was a bad, a bad decision. But then when you make money, you always feel like it's not enough. But there were days in 2016 and even in 2017 where you were up $2,000 in options trades and you didn't think that was enough. So I'm, I kind of scratch my head and say, when is it ever going to be enough? And, and this, is, this is the thing. I mean, all you ever do when you're trading to, to, to make more money is to add another quantity of share size, which takes and puts another zero on it. And when you add another zero on everything, it all looks very different. We did do that lecture a while ago. Maybe I'll do it again sometime, not today. Uh, we have so many new people in here now where we talk about the difference with sizing. Actually, that was when Eric was here. We did that. It was a March, it was a March when Eric was here. Google Trader was here. We did the whole lecture. We talked about the difference with, with a number. I mean, you just take... If you made $137 today, if you'd made $1,370, would that be a lot better? Yes. What was a different size? If you made $500 today, what would be the difference? If you made $500 or $5,000 size, you know, this happened to be a very expensive stock. Some of you probably could not do the size maybe that you would have wanted, but actually, you know, you still, everybody made money. So if we're talking about the consistency here and the move that we got, you know, even if you had done 300 shares in this, okay, very quickly, Barry, Barry, are you here? I'm going to test you. 300 shares of the 70 cent stock, go. How much is a dollar and cent risk? Barry, I'm testing you right now. 300 bucks, if that, or 300 shares. 300 shares times 70 cents, go, Barry. Journey woman, too. I'm testing you right now. You cannot use a calculator. Smooth trader, you got it, but you know you're, you weren't having an issue with the sizing. Two hundred and ten dollars. Very good. I mean, uh, yes, very good. Excellent. So then you can do it in your head. So then you can. You can do it. Boom! You can do it. Journey went and didn't write it. Write anything. I hope she was just not at the computer. Barry is saying, "How can you not be happy when you're making money?" Stop complaining. Galahad is complaining. He's saying his it's not his money management. He thinks that his money management is amazing. He's saying he's upset about risk to reward. In fact, let's go over it. Let's be so darn specific here today let's write it down exactly no forget forget some of you had a little bit of a late entry 149 actually i got this at 80 but let's just say 149.70 entry stop 150.50 is approximately 70 cents if you got out of it Right at 148, or a couple pennies above. What is your move in that? A dollar, again, I'm roughing it here, a dollar 80. So, what is your risk to reward in that? If you did the entry that I did, if you held it down where I did, what is your risk to reward in that trade? It's over two. Is that shitty? Is that poor? I, I don't know what to say, Galahad. You didn't hold this down where I did today. The risk to reward was in this trade today. I did not even hold it down to 146 something or 147. I get out of in this bar here, which was absolutely the right thing to do. But if I would held it down here, I mean, it would have been even more. Actually, it would have been another dollar. 148. It would have been another dollar 30. It would have been almost two hours more. You're trying to tell me that a two R and a little bit, whatever it is, move in this today was not a good risk to reward? You know? I, I don't know. Um, I think the idea of killing the trade if you're down a half is a good idea, a uh, smooth trader for the options. Yes. Yes. Where is this at right now here?
You think most of the population sees downside. Money management is a totally alien concept with regard to investing trading outside the field view of the blinders they wear that they're not even aware that they have them on. Paulo Bear is being very introspective today. <laughs> Solving the problems of the world. <laughs> Solving the problems of all Americans with paychecks. I don't, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I'm I'm concerned about accuracy personally. And we will then have days like today where we will also have really nice risk to reward and accuracy. But for me, it is really about the accuracy. So, you know, you got to do whatever works for you. If what you're doing is working for you, continue doing it. If what you're doing is not working for you with your money management or your targets, your exits, then I suggest doing what I'm doing. There's no two ways about it though. If you've been doing the trades I've been doing all year or calling in the room, you are positive for the year. And if you're not and you're making it up as you go along or not sizing yourself right, then you are 100% responsible for your own errors. With a $400 risk, you could have made 1,028. So that's two and a half hours. Yes, seven streams. I mean, I, you know, I didn't know how many, I don't know how many share quantity you would have taken, but I'm guessing you figured it out. I saw you had made your own cheat sheet. Why do you think you're not doing well, Galahad? I'll give you one minute of your time here and then we're going to let the room go. Because, I mean, you're the only person that's writing anything negative in the room today. And actually, you're the only person that's been writing anything negative for weeks and months. I, you know, uh, some people have had some issues. They've reached out to me. I've helped them. I just gave Barry a quiz. He passed with flying colors. So I'm guessing that he's getting over his, his arithmetic issues. He's fixed his platform issues. Journey woman walked away. She had to do something with the baby, I'm guessing. <laughs> Her grandbaby. But, I mean, all in all, Galahad, you seem to be the only one unhappy. And I, and I I'm just don't know what to say. I'm very happy that you made money in the, in the CMG yesterday. I, it's just tough to see someone not doing well, and I've spent a lot of time with you, you know. I, I, and you want to argue with me when I say what you need to be doing, and then, I'm, then I don't know what to say. Then I kind of have to throw my hands up in the air and say, eh, you know, I don't know. What do you want me to say? UAL, yes, you could have done that too. I think, did Mark Mobile do this as well? Did anyone do the UAL? Uh, I, you would have had to do it on your own. You would have had to do it on your own. I didn't call it exactly. By the time I looked at it, it broke. It had a nice move. It went a buck. Um, IBM moved bigger, but this definitely had a nice entry and a swift drop. And this rated well too. So we had watched them both. And then I just decided to do IBM. I did like that better. If CMG covers your bills, why are you complaining? If this one option trade covered your bills, why are you complaining? You know why I think you're not doing well? Because you because you complain too much. <laughs> there. That's the reason. And there is no other reason, actually. You're too, way too negative. I'm going to call you Negative Nelly. In fact, I'm going to find a GIF that's going to, it's going to be a GIF. And I'm going to make it, and it's, it's going to be like something where a person's negative all the time is beating their head against the wall, something. I'm going to look up a Simpsons GIF. That's for you. And we'll call it Galahad, like Bart. You're very happy except when the computer crash. Okay. <laughs> I don't think complaining on a day like today is being positive, Galahad. I don't think that's complaining at all. I mean, I don't think that's being positive at all. I think that's complaining. No, he made $137 today, Barry. Yesterday, he made like $1,300, I think, or something. I don't know, over $1,000. But he still feels the need to complain, so <laughs> I don't know what to say anymore. All right, I, we, I've got to go because I don't want to become negative. We had an amazing day. I want to bask in the glory of my own IBM. <laughs> Enough. I can call Dr. Joyce Brothers. I don't know. Dr. Phillip. Oprah. Help. <laughs> Thank you for the wonderful trade. You're welcome, Mountain Girl. Mark Mobile says it. The only difference between a big one and a small one is just the size. 
Exactly. Exactly. All right, have a good day today, everyone. Have a wonderful day. I'll see you all tomorrow. Okie doke.